Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Sex tapes, extortion, prostitution, it's all over the media in China, including even state-run media. Last November, an official in Chongqing was sacked after he was secretly filmed having sex with an 18-year-old girl. Now, 10 more officials have suffered the same fate in that same scandal. Is this a sign that the Chinese leadership is cracking down on corruption? Today joining us, we have China analyst Matt Ganezda. So Matt, let's talk a little bit about the whole situation here, because it has a very kind of only in China flavor to it. Yeah, so you've got this uh, Chinese party official from the Beibei district of Chongqing, which is where Bo Xi lies from uh, in southwest China, where he used to rule until he was uh, ousted. So this party official, Lei Zhengfu, uh, was basically, this is actually back in 2007, the, the actual tape was filmed. Uh, and he was uh, filmed, you know, uh, secretly having uh, having sex with this 18-year-old girl. And this girl had been hired by a construction company. That construction company wanted favorable contracts from Lei Jungfu in his district. So the construction company was able to use this tape as a way to, where they were trying to use it as a way to say, oh, you know, if you don't give us favorable contracts. So it was really a honey trap in a way. It was uh, basically uh, bringing this girl in and having her like have sex with him as a way to kind of bribe him and at the same time and trap him. Right, but it didn't really work because uh, Lei Jungfu basically then went to Bo Xi Lai and, and, uh, and you know, told him what happened apparently. Uh, and then uh, according to the Epic Times, Bo Xi Lai then basically cracked down on the construction company uh, and detained uh, the young woman. So actually it kind of came back to bite them. And then this official, Lei Jungfu, had been protected for all this time for five years until finally now Bo Xi Lai is gone. You have a new leadership in China. And this a citizen journalist, uh, ha, you know, Zhu uh, Feng, had exposed it uh, by basically airing the tape uh, online. And only now has this official, Lei Jungfu, actually been sacked. So it seems like the real question here is, you know, are Chinese authorities doing enough to protect officials from being entrapped? <laughs> oh, you know, these poor officials are, are getting entrapped for their corruption. Actually, uh, the Chinese Communist Party has done a lot to protect their officials from getting in trouble. Uh, it's only, that's why only recently some of these uh, scandals have, have come to light. But, you know, as I mentioned, this sex tape was filmed in 2007. So they were doing a lot to protect Lei Jungfu and there's also other officials um, Zhu Rei Feng, who's the citizen journalist who uh, put out this tape, but also had tapes of uh, other officials uh, who apparently these tapes were given to him by someone within the Chongqing Police Department. So uh, these tapes have been around for a while. Um, the party knew about it. They just didn't do anything. So is this part of a larger purge of Chongqing officials now that Bo Xi Lai is gone? Or is it part of the Xi Jinping's new leadership's anti-corruption efforts? Well, I think there's a bit of both here. Certainly, Xi Jinping and the new Chinese leadership have been talking about cracking down on corruption, saying, basically, this is the only way to save the party. So there's a lot of pressure from Beijing now to root out corruption, not so much as a, as a, a moral principle, but more as a very practical way to uh, resolve some of the problems that are so damaging to the Communist Party uh, internally and, and to its image in the public. So there's pressure from Beijing. There's also now pressure in Chongqing, because after Bo Xi Lai has been ousted, all those people who were on Team Bo Xi Lai, like Lei Jungfu, uh, are sort of also uh, can be purged now. Well, I don't know if they're, they're purged because they're under Bo Xi Lai. It seems that it's just safe to purge them. Well, exactly. It's politically safe to, to do that. And then there's pressure from Chinese citizens. Chinese citizens are increasingly aware of corruption. They're increasingly angry about corruption. And when you have such uh, graphic physical evidence, uh, such as a videotape of this kind of you know, very uh, lewd corruption uh, and scandal, it's very easy for this to sort of be taken up by netizens at large and say, you know, look at this huge issue, you've got to do something. So now that it's politically safe to get rid of Lei Jungfu, uh, basically he gets sacked. And then other officials as well who've been involved in such scandals can be sacked. And the Communist Party Central kind of wins here because instead of, they're not making it look like, oh, the citizen journalist has exposed corruption. It's more like, oh, we're cracking down on corruption. So they kind of score those political points for looking like they're cracking down. Well, it's interesting that, you know, the 10 officials who got sacked as part of the same kind of bribery scandal with this um, developer, this construction company, were not in uh, the... Uh, remaining six tapes that Zhu Feng has. So there seems to be more out there. 
yeah, well, we don't really know what's out there. Certainly, um, you know, Chongqing officials want to figure out what else uh, this citizen journalist has. Speaking of that, he was, uh, you know, visited by some police officers. He lives in Beijing, and he was visited by some Chongqing police uh, quite recently. You know, is that um, something that's common in China that, like, you can go from Chongqing to Beijing to kind of pressure this guy? It seems like they wanted to know, you know, where he got the tapes. Yeah, I mean, it's imagine like you've got a, you know, some sheriffs from a sheriff of Dallas coming to New York City to question someone who's living in New York City. It's pretty unusual, but it d does certainly show that there's some uh, collusion between you know Beijing and Chongqing, and they're certainly allowing this to happen and allowing Chongqing police to put pressure on this Chinese citizen who potentially has you know damaging material on a lot of people. Well, is it then that there's this anti-corruption campaign is not being supported by the Chongqing police? Well, see, the thing is, it's it's not so much. Uh, a fundamental anti-corruption campaign. It's that they want to look like they're getting rid of corruption, uh, but obviously that's not their own, uh, only motivation. Because by by you know they took in uh, Ray Jung, uh, sorry uh, Ju Ray Fung for questioning for seven hours, uh, you know trying to get him to talk about what he had on those tapes, putting pressure on citizen journalists. Um, it's not like all of a sudden citizens are allowed to expose corruption however they want, whenever they want. So it's still a managed campaign by, uh, by authorities to, they want to root out corruption, but they want to make it look like they're rooting out corruption and not give citizens too much leeway. Otherwise, that can become dangerous. Well, let's talk about the reactions from Chinese people to the scandal. Yeah, there's an interesting uh, study or um, survey actually done by the Global Times, which is a, a state-run media. And a lot of the people were actually saying uh, that this woman, uh, Zhao Hongxia, who was the, the at that, at that time, the 18-year-old uh, uh, girl in the video, a lot of people saying, you know, she's a hero. Uh, a lot of people saying she's also a victim. Interestingly, uh, in the survey, one of the questions was, uh, police arrested her in accordance with the law. Only 1.7% agreed with that. But 76.8% uh, say that she was arrested out of revenge a few years ago uh, for her involvement. So obviously, uh, there's the netizens are very suspicious of this, and a lot of them also treat, you know, this woman who was paid uh, or rewarded for having sex with him as a hero, not as a prostitute. So uh, it's kind of uh, reflects how angry netizens are with Chinese officials. She was actually recently arrested for extortion. It seems like um, her part in it is more heavy punishment than the officials who were sacked. Yeah, isn't that weird? The the whistleblowers get uh, you know a heavier sentence than the officials. Or in her case, she's not a whistleblower. She, uh, but she was involved in it. Uh, you know, who's who's really the 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 criminal? Is it the the Chinese official or is it the young woman? I mean, I don't think anybody comes out of this looking really great. I mean, even if she, I mean, she was only eighteen at the time, but she was, you know, being used to extort officials. So. Right. Well, but that's my point. I mean, she does look great in the eyes of Chinese netizens. And that is an interesting reflection of sort of a larger trend going on in society where uh, basically as long as you expose corruption, you know, people will treat you as a hero because there's so much public sentiment in China against corruption and that, that, that public anger is getting bigger and bigger every year. So are there implications from this uh, scandal for the larger issues of corruption among officials or the uh, Xi Jinping's attempts to crack down on corruption? It's difficult for them to uh, sort of make this an isolated case, but at the same time, I think they want to make this kind of case as isolated as possible, which is basically that central authorities want to get rid of corruption because it serves their political ends. But if they go too far, uh, you know, then it could also cause harm to some of the people in power. So it's, they're really trying to walk a, a pretty thin line. So does that mean that this is not a sign that Xi Jinping wants to uh, take the cr corruption craft down further than it's been done before? Well, the question is that to, to really get rid of corruption within the Communist Party requires a very, very deep fundamental change. And it's unlikely that the Communist Party is, is willing or ready to go that far in terms of, you know, implementing a system with the rule of law, an independent judiciary, uh, you know, independent uh, investigation, discipline, inspection committee. So that's very unlikely to happen. But certainly we are going to see 
more cases of cracking down on corruption because as long as uh, that can be publicized in the media, cracking down on corruption, that makes the party good. And in theory, in their view, in the eyes of the people, it'll make the party look better like it's doing their job. But if they don't really fundamentally get rid of the problem in this sort of uh, issue of you know, officials on a wide scale being corrupt, having a sense of entitlement and using their power uh, you know, for their own uh, ends, if they can't get rid of that, then they're never really going to fix the corruption problem. All right, thanks for joining us today, Matt, to talk about this issue. And thanks for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, join us at ntd.tv.